Hi fellow crafters! In today's Case the Caddy video, I'm going to feature the Crane of Fortune bundle, which is found in the new January to June mini catalog. I'm going to show you how to take one of the catalog samples and add your own little twist. And on the card that we're going to case, there's a really unique sun element that I'm going to show you how to make. Shall we get started? Hey everyone, I'm Terry from nutsaboutstamping.com. I love sharing techniques and project ideas for rubber stamping, paper crafting, and scrapbooking with you each week. Be sure to hit that red subscribe button and the bell beside it so that you'll be the first to be notified when my next video goes live. And be sure to follow all the way through my video for my bonus tips and design ideas. There are times when we are all stuck for inspiration, so this new Case the Caddy series shows you how to get inspiration from a resource that you always have on hand. Now, let's case that caddy. First, let's look at the Crane of Fortune bundle. This product was on my first catalog order for two reasons. Having traveled to Japan a few times, I now love all things with an Asian design. And the second reason is that there are a lot of cranes that I see when walking by the canals where I live. And did you know that cranes represent good fortune? So if you see one, that's a good sign. The stamped images, including this elegant crane and the dual chrysanthemum blossoms, will give your projects amazing texture and depth for a stunning focal point and the sentiments can be used at any time that you want to send your love and well wishes to somebody special in your life. Now the good fortune dies include the crane. They also have this die that's ginkgo biloba leaves and then other intricate die cut pieces that will add texture and visual interest to your projects. Now let's have a look at what the Stampin' Up! concept artists have created on page 24 of the mini catalog. So here is the Crane of Fortune bundle and this card here caught my eye, especially because of the sun element. And it took me a few minutes to figure out how the concept artist created that. And I thought, oh, I get it now. And so I'm gonna show you how it was done so that you can use this at home. And as I said in the intro, especially if you don't have a sun stamp in your collection, I'll show you how to create a sun anytime you want one. So let's get started on this project. The first little twist I'm going to create for my card is I'm going to change up the color of the card base. I decided to use Highland Heather instead of Pool Party. Pool Party, which I think is the color that they used in the catalog. It's not my favorite color. I don't know why, it's just not. So I love purples and so I thought I would use Highland Heather. So in the catalog, they take this particular leaf stamp and they stamp it across the bottom. So I'm going to do that as well. And in the catalog, they used, I'm pretty sure, Versamark to stamp the image. So I'm going to follow that example as they have in the catalog. And I'm going to vary the height of my leaves like so. And then I'm going to clean off the stamp and I'm going to stamp it a second time using Highland Heather. I have a scrap piece of basic white cardstock and that's what I'm going to stamp this little image on. And then I'm going to set it aside and die cut it in a minute because I want to stamp one other image that I'm going to also add on the front of my card. Next, I'm going to take the crane image from the stamp set. And the second twist is I'm going to use basic gray. I'm not quite sure what color they used in the catalog, but it didn't appeal to me either. <laughs> so uh, because this image is quite large, I'm going to stamp my basic gray down on top of it so I can see that it has full coverage of ink. That's a tip that you might want to try if you use large images now and then. Okay, so I'm gonna stamp it on a piece of basic white and there we go. I really like sort of the gray and the purple, so I think that'll be really nice. 
Now we're going to stamp a layer for the, for the front of the card. Very similar to the sample in the catalog, I've got a piece of basic white cardstock and I've got this cloud image. But what I'm going to do a little bit differently, my own little twist is instead of stamping using Highland Heather, so which is the card base color, that's what they did in the catalog. They'd stamp the clouds in the same color as the card base. I'm going to do my own little twist and I'm going to stamp Fresh Freesia. And I'm going to randomly stamp very similar to the catalog sample. I'm gonna bring a piece of grid paper so that I can go off the edge. Now what you want to do when you try this at home is you want to make sure you leave room for the phrase. And I am not sure that I did, but let me check. Oh yeah, yeah, we'll be good. All right, so there is my cloud layer. And now I'm going to ink and stamp down the phrase. Now the phrase says much luck and good fortune, but in the catalog sample, they only stamped much luck. I think what I'm going to do, well, I don't think I'm gonna have room to stamp good fortune, so maybe I'll copy the catalog sample exactly. And I am going to ink up the good no, the much luck phrase using my Bumblebee stamp and write marker. This is how you can take a stamp that has a lot of words and only choose a couple of words to stamp. So I'm going to carefully use the brush end and I'm going to ink up the words, trying not to get any ink on any of the other parts of the words. And then I'm going to stamp it down on my sample, like so. Now, the K didn't really come out very well, which is great, I don't have a problem with that, because the other end of the stamp and write markers has a pen, so I can just fill it in like so. And now we're gonna move on to the next step in making this card. The next thing I'm going to do is show you how to create that beautiful sun element that was used on the sample in the catalog. So I have a scrap piece of basic white cardstock and I am going to bring in my grid paper again. And I have got my Daffodil Delight Stampin' Blends and here's how you create that element. You start with your lightest and you just want to color across the whole layer using the light Daffodil Delight. And then you're going to take the dark Daffodil Delight and you're going to only go over part of it. I'm doing the left-hand side to match the sample in the catalog like so, and then I'm going to bring back in my light and I'm going to blend it a little bit more on top just to blur the, the lines where the dark marker ended, like so. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take one of our layering circles framelits and we're going to die cut the circle out and that creates the sun. Now I have some other die cutting that I want to do, so let's do that next. There we go, I have all of the elements die cut and ready to add to my card. So let's go ahead and do that next. I'm going to take the layer and I'm going to adhere that flat onto the front of my card, sort of up a little bit higher so that I can still see the leaf images down below. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to adhere the crane using my Stampin' Dimensionals, here they are, 
So I'm going to put a few stamped and dimensionals on the back and then attach him or her to the front of my card. Like so. And then I am going to take this sun and I am going to tuck it in behind and I'm going to layer it flat like so. And then the last thing I'm going to do is to take this tiny leaf image and I'm going to use mini Stampin' Dimensionals to attach it to the front of the card. And there we go. We have recreated the catalog sample, but with our own little twist. Now, in the catalog sample, I don't see any additional embellishments, and I love to use embellishments. So I have these in-color jewels, and the Fresh Freesia is one of my choices, and so I'm going to add some jewels to complete my card. And there we go. We have created a beautiful card idea with a little bit of inspirational help from the mini catalog. If you would like a complete listing of the supplies that I used and the measurements and product ordering numbers for all of the products, head on over to my blog. I'll provide the link to my blog article in the description box underneath this video. Now, with Valentine's Day just around the corner, you might want to see a Valentine's card idea. So I recommend you watch this video next. I'm Terry. I'm nuts about stamping. I hope you'll case the caddy someday soon too. Bye for now.